Hello everyone, George here, and it's been quite a while since I last jumped into an open CV video. However, there has been such demand that I continue the series that I've decided to spend the next few weeks creating several videos that are going to describe camera calibration under three different methods. If they are predefined files, if it's a live stream, or if it is a, uh, a pre-captured movie. This first video is going to talk about how we can use the Aruco class to actually print out those first markers that we need. Now everything I'm going to cover of course, is covered within a documentation for these modules. Please make sure you look back to prior videos about how you can incorporate the uh, contribute libraries in your own version of OpenCV. The information, while it is covered within the documentation, is a little bit mm, difficult to digest at times. So what we're going to do is together walk through the marker creation in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into doing that. As you can see here, I have my project already set up, as in prior videos sh have shown. But there are a few things that are different. If you remember in video one, I used OpenCV World. Well, I'm not using that anymore because I had difficulties actually uh, compiling that particular file for me to use. So instead, I decided not to do that. And I'm incorporating core image codecs, image processing, high GUI, Aruco, and Calibrate3D.hpp directly into my project. In addition, if we right click on our project and go to properties, we're going to see that under my additional dependencies folder, you will find quite a few. Here are the additional dependencies you will need throughout this video series. So make sure you pause the video and, and add these to your particular project. All right. Notice that they're all the debug libraries because that's what I'm working with. If you're not working with the debug libraries, but the release versions, make sure that D is gone and you have nothing there instead. Okay. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same as before. I have my OpenCV directory right here. I've changed it to my E drive because it's been almost a year since I've done this series. And I have also, of course, moved my include directories to where the include directories actually are. Once again, check back to prior videos on how you should be doing all of that. We're going to start out with just a clean project within main. And we have included the standard namespace as well as using the CV namespace to reduce on the length of our uh, names. We're going to want to create a new function. And that new function is going to be a void create Aruco markers. Like I said, in this video, we're interested in creating the markers that eventually we'll be using to detect the position and orientation of these things using a camera. In future videos, probably two to three videos, we'll be talking about how to calibrate our cameras to work with these markers. But first, we need the markers, and you're going to print these things out on your standard printer and work with them later on. So first of all, we need a matte object to insert our Ruko marker image into. So let's do a matte output marker. Next up, we need to create a pointer to the dictionary object. That is the Aruco marker dictionary objects. And basically this pointer is going to continually move through all these different markers and we're going to print out each one or I am right each one outwards to our directory. That way we have a series of images which define all the potential markers that we can utilize. So we're going to do PTR for pointer. And of course this is a, a template type. So we're going to use Aruco dictionary. And within that, we're going to call this marker, marker dictionary. All right. And that marker dictionary is going to be equal to Aruco colon colon. And we're going to do get predefined dictionaries. And within the predefined dictionaries, we have a whole host of different dictionaries that have been made for us. The dictionary itself is going to look like, well, let's see if that website actually has it under here. It's going to have a host of predefined dictionaries that do a wonderful job at, um, well, being different enough to be easily detected and of different sizes. Now, if you want your marker detection to be as fast as possible, you're going to want to use the smallest marker size because obviously a four by four is simpler than a six by six and so forth. So in our examples, we're going to use the least interesting or different markers for what we're doing. So let's just do a Aruco colon colon predefined dictionary name colon colon. And now we get to pick all of the different dictionary names available. 
Notice how there's four by fours, five by fives, six by sixes, and so forth. Remember, if you want your detection to be the fastest possible, you should be using the four by four module. I'm going to be using four by four by 50, because in this particular case, I have no reason to need more than 50 markers. If you have a reason in your projects to use a lot more markers than this, then by all means, feel free to. But remember, you're kind of limited on how many pixels you have or marker uh, bits you have. So four by four is going to be the easiest. I'm going to use four by four fifty. With that, we now have a dictionary loaded up that we can use to print out all this information. So let's go ahead and do a for loop. And the idea behind the for loop is we're going to iterate over all of those 50 markers and then I am write them out to a directory. Well, the project directory in this case. And by doing so, we have a bunch of different images now we can print out with our printer or whatever device you want to use. And it can be used to detect these markers in the future. This is the first step in doing anything with Aruco markers. So let's go ahead and do that. So int i is equal to zero. i is less than 50 because we've selected that many. Zero through 49 is equal to 50 markers. And then i plus plus. All right, so now we need to actually do the dirty business of what we're expected. So first, we need to draw the marker itself. We need to de determine which marker within that dictionary we want to push into our mat object. So let's do a root co colon colon draw, draw marker. And now we'll pass in the dictionary which we've created. So marker dictionary. Next up is the one we want to query. So we're starting at 0 to 49. So first at 0 and then we'll be going all the way up to 59. Finally is the number of pixels we want each of these images to actually be. I'm going to say 500. Now where are we going to put this out to? Well we're going to do that to out marker. And then finally whatever the border should be. I'm not going to have a border so I'm going to set that to 1 which is the default value anyway for this function. I spelt that wrong, so let's make sure we do that there. Output marker, there we are. We're going to be using our uh, string streams and so forth to make our lives a tiny bit easier. I forgot a semicolon right there, didn't I? And we're going to use an O string stream right there. Convert. And this is going to basically take our string name, append to it the i value, and then use that as the file name for when we write things out to our uh, you know, directory. So now we're going to do a string image name is going to be equal to, and in our case we're working with 4 by 4 markers, so 4 by 4 marker underscore. The underscore is there to separate the 4 by 4 marker from the number itself. Now we're going to do a convert we're going to use this operator because it's been overloaded with O string streams to push this Im information into it. So we're going to do the image name first. We're going to do then I, which is the integer value we're currently on. So that's going to be 0 to 49. And then finally, the file extension we're working with. I'm just going to push them out as JPEGs for the moment. You can do PNGs or anything else that you want. And then now we're going to do our I am right. I am right was covered in earlier OpenCV basic videos I pushed out. So make sure you watch them. And we'll do a convert dot str. So we're converting this O string stream to an actual string, which can be utilized by I am right. And now we're also going to push out without the mat object. So that's output marker. So this entire function is going to iterate over all the markers for the predefined 4x4 50 marker. Basically make them images that we can then print out on our computers. If you want to, you can make this an integer value and then you can pass in whatever value you want to for right here. It's entirely up to you. So let's go ahead and call this method within our main function. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and open up by right clicking and going to open file solution. Here you can see there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and hit run on our device. Yes, to build. And it has successfully built. And more importantly, now I have all of the Aruco markers from 0 to 49 or 50 individual markers that I can now print out and use for uh, detecting the, well, basically using them to figure out where the heck these things are. 
So please go ahead and do this, print out however many markers you think you need, and then in the following videos we're going to start talking about camera calibration. Specifically, three different methods as I mentioned before, real time, offline, which means someone has uh, taken a video of the calibration cube, and then finally, individual images to work correctly. I hope you enjoyed me coming back to this series and giving you more information on OpenCV. And remember, if you liked it, give me a like. If you don't like it, not only give me a dislike, but comment down below and let me know what more I can do for you. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, always remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night. So long. Bye.